Hello, my name is Simran Kohli and I have done my MA in Mass Communications. I have been an active media professional working in the field of radio, digital marketing and online entertainment for the last 20 years. I have also been a regular faculty at Mass Communication Research Center teaching postgraduate students of Mass Communication, Convergent Journalism and Development Communication. Today we are going to talk about the digital experience in the context of mobiles, cyberspace, online and the various applications that seem to run our lives now. We cannot even imagine doing something as simple as dialing our phones without looking at the contact list stored in the hard drive of our mobiles or messaging someone without downloading WhatsApp or Telegram or the very latest Clubhouse. Being in a place with no Wi-Fi connection is like being choked without oxygen. Life has not become digital, rather digital has become our life now. We are studying Unit 1, Social Media, a new paradigm and Chapter 1, the digital experience. We covered Part 1 in the last class where we discussed the concept of digital experience in general and mobile digital experience in particular. Today we will discuss digital experience and cyberspace. What is cyberspace? Characteristics of cyberspace. Digital experience online in cyberspace. Good and bad. Online and applications. How building apps leads to better customer experiences. How mobile apps have changed consumer behavior. The benefits of having a mobile app. And finally, Advantages and Disadvantages of Digitization Digital Experience and Cyberspace What is Cyberspace? Cyberspace is a means to describe anything associated with the Internet and the diverse Internet culture. Cyberspace is the theoretical environment where communication occurs over computer networks. It refers to the virtual computer world and an electronic medium that is used to facilitate online communications. Cyberspace's core feature is an interactive and virtual environment for a broad range of participants. An example of cyberspace is the home of Google, Yahoo and Facebook. The electronic medium of computer networks in which online communication takes place. The virtual space created by interconnected computers and computer networks on the internet. Cyberspace denotes a widespread interconnected digital technology. The term entered popular culture from science fiction and the arts in the early 90s when the internet was in its infancy and it grew to represent the ideas and theories surrounding the internet and computer networks. Today it is now used by technology strategists, security professionals, government, military, industry leaders and entrepreneurs to describe global technology environment as standing for the global network of interdependent information. There is something called cyber ethics also. Amongst individuals on cyberspace, there is believed to be a code of shared rules and ethics mutually beneficial for all to follow referred to as cyber ethics. Many view the right to privacy as most important to a functional code of cyber ethics. Such moral responsibilities go hand in hand when working online with global networks, specifically when opinions are involved with online social experiences. As a social experience, individuals can interact, exchange ideas, share information, provide social support, conduct business, direct actions, create artistic media, 
play games, engage in political discussion and so on using this global network. They are sometimes referred to as cybernauts. About the cyber world. The cyber world or cyberspace is more than just the internet. It refers to an online environment where many participants are involved in social interactions and have the ability to affect and influence each other. People interact in cyberspace through the use of digital media. Examples of cyberspace interactions. Some of the examples are to create media, share media and consume media. Through internet-based social networking sites such as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, people can remain connected to their loved ones, for example family and friends, and their larger community, for example distant relatives and ex-classmates, and even make new friends online. Advantages of Cyberspace Informational resource It is a virtual library of information. Communication. In the past, to communicate with someone who isn't in the same room as you, you would have to call them on a phone. Social networking. Entertainment. Opportunities. Characteristics of cyberspace. Digital footprint. When people are online, most of them engage in activities that leave a digital footprint. A digital footprint refers to all information found online about a person. It is either posted by that person or others intentionally or unintentionally. This information leaves a permanent mark as it can be easily retraced, retrieved and passed on by others. The digital footprint can be used by potential employers and universities looking for information on their employees and students. The following infographic shows the characteristics of cyberspace and its impact. A great way to calculate digital footprint and study its effectiveness is product and customer experience on one hand and their reviews and feedback on the other. Let's look at some customer experience examples. Example number one, Amazon, product experience online. Amazon is one of the largest e-commerce platforms in the world. Apart from setting the standards in e-commerce with competitive prices and unrivaled product inventory, the company is also one of the biggest references when it comes to digital product experiences. From a Google-like ability to search to extremely detailed product education, Amazon makes it easy for customers to evaluate if a product fits their needs. They have a powerful system for customer reviews and ratings that help you learn more about a particular product. Customers who have previously purchased the products can also upload images with it and you can easily translate their reviews to your native language as well. The company also provides a handy recommender system to help you understand which product might fit your needs the best. It is based on previous search items or what additional products other users have bought among with the one you are evaluating. And what's even more awesome, you can even rate the reviews of other users to let everyone know if they have been helpful to you. Digital experience online in cyberspace. Good and bad. Most of us live and breathe the internet. It's become a natural extension of us. We rarely even think of it as a separate entity. The transition from an up and coming technology to an integral part of our lives that most of us can't live without has been rapid and seamless. The internet and cyberspace have a profound impact on our psychological behavior. How we interact with one another, how we work, how we love, and even what we consider ourselves to be. Below, we explore all of these issues and give a moment of thought to Internet's effect on our present and future lives. Cyberspace and the Internet Cyberspace represents anything associated with the Internet and more so relates to the theories and symbolic space that surrounds the Internet. Today, they are often used interchangeably, especially since the Internet has grown in scope and influence. If the internet was physical, it would be an actual book you hold in your hand, including all of the written elements of the story, while cyberspace would represent the mental projection you create when reading the book.
This far out vision of cyberspace has generated a completely false reality that's computer generated. The extension of cyberspace. This notion and the actual physical reality of cyberspace has only grown with the entry of new devices into our daily lives. Smartwatches, smartphones, smart cars, and that's just the beginning. We are moving into a new world where the digital world is coming into constant contact with our physical worlds. Your mind, self, and cyberspace. Even though cyberspace isn't a tangible physical reality, it influences actual physical elements including our minds, bodies, and sense of self. This has a deep influence on our day-to-day -day lives and can even be seen as an entirely separate psychological space. In a recent Atlantic article, professor of neuroeconomics Paul J. Zak made the argument that the brain doesn't really differentiate between the two. Your brain releases dopamine via physical interaction. But the same release can happen via social media interaction as well. The online world as therapy. For some, the online world can be an outlet for their true selves. It offers a place for hidden desires or repressed aspects of ourselves to finally be set free. We have the ability to not only inhabit more flexible identities, but can create various identities which can be therapeutic to our physical selves. Sadly, things like homophobia, racism and other dark parts of human nature still exist. The physical world isn't always a safe place. When the notion of a safe physical community is impossible, then cyberspace can act as a haven for support and understanding. Pro-social online behavior does exist and can help to usher a new era of human understanding, acceptance and empathy. Online and applications. We are in the digital age and there are literally thousands of digital solutions and strategies out there. With so much choice, it can be difficult to know where you should focus your efforts. Some options are more obvious than others. For example, you'd find it difficult to find a business in 2021 that doesn't have a website. There are now plenty of businesses that have an app. Like with anything else in business, you need to see the evidence-based value in something before you commit. How building apps leads to better customer experiences. For small and medium-sized businesses who built apps before 2016, their main motivation was to increase sales. The 2017 report titled Small Business Digital Marketing Survey by Clutch found that 42% of businesses said increasing sales was the top reason for developing an app. For businesses that developed an app after 2016, the top reason was to improve customer service. This change represents a huge shift in focus for businesses all over the world. We now live in a customer-focused world. Delivering high-quality customer service is now mandatory if you want your business to thrive. The consumers of 2021 are now more motivated by having a good experience than they are on getting the lowest price. Today, we are going to look at why you should build an app and how having an app leads to better customer experiences. How mobile apps have changed consumer behavior. Online shopping leads to more shopping. Research by Statista found that when a smartphone user engages with online shopping, either on a browser or on a mobile app, the next app they open will also be a shopping app. By having a dedicated app where you can provide an online store and customer service can increase the amount of customer engagement. Young smartphone users spend more time on apps than any other age group. If young people are a significant proportion of the customer base, then having a mobile app is essential. These highlight the external reasons why building an app makes sense for the vast majority of businesses. The benefits of having a mobile app. Another way for your customers to contact you. Over the years, businesses have shifted from one channel to multi-channel and now omni-channel. Today, Customers care strongly about having options. When you limit options, 
some customers will inevitably be frustrated or feel helpless. For example, if you only provide a phone number to call, what happens to customers who have a broken speaker on their phone? Now they can't contact you, they'll be frustrated and they'll think twice about doing business with you again. Sales growth. When a customer visits your website, you have a very limited time to influence and convert them into a customer. When the user is done with the website, they'll move on to something else. You can no longer contact them. The window of opportunity has now closed. With an app, you're always present. Your app can send push notifications to keep customers updated, offer them discounts and more. Growing customer loyalty. Apps create communities. They are a place your customers can always go to and engage with. You can build your app to maximize on this and grow your customer loyalty. Take full advantage of personalization based on the data you know about your customers from their account information. Branding. An app is another way of showing off your brand and providing your brand integrity to make it consistent and memorable. Customers should recognize your app based on your other branding channels. Data and analytics. Apps are a valuable source of data. When users download an app and use it, we can track what they do on how much time they spend on and what they buy on the app. This data is extremely valuable because it can link every interaction to an individual customer and give insights into customer segments, behavior, purchasing trends and more. Apps do not have opening hours. They are up and running all the time. If we can't offer a 24-7 customer service, then offer a chatbot and self-service section on the app. There should always be a way for the customers to contact you. Convenience. Customers will never be without their smartphones, which means they'll never be without the app. They can engage with the businesses quickly and conveniently. You can allow customers to set up repeat purchases of product, remind them of discounts, save their payment details so they don't have to input them each time and more. Customer experiences. Example number one, Starbucks gamified loyalty program. The company's awesome gamified loyalty system follows you to collect stars when purchasing your favorite drinks and get exciting rewards in return. The awesome app features the great user experience and the innovative gamification approach are an excellent way to drive more sales, gain more brand visibility and keep customers satisfied. To drive even more engagement, Starbucks also gives you the opportunity to get stars faster with additional challenges and double star days. You can also order on the go before arriving to your local coffee shop. The way they have designed their reward system not only gets more revenue for the company, but also offers an outstanding customer experience. In fact, the Starbucks Reward Loyalty Program currently has more than 16 million members, driving 40% of the total sales of the company. The company's successful gamification approach is one of the best customer experience examples, showing that with some additional incentives that translate to tangible rewards, you can change behavior, incentivize more product purchases, encourage returning visits, get valuable customer data, promote merchandise and partner offers. Advantages and disadvantages of digitization. This new digital era can be daunting and worrisome for some, especially the older generation who often disapprove of this new way of doing things. But how beneficial really are these digital developments? Here, we take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of digitization. Advantages. The digital era brings all kinds of information to our very fingertips thanks to the centralization and accessibility of data. For example, people now rely heavily on computers and mobile phones with internet, which gives you an immediate answer to any questions you might have. Digitization has transformed our ability to communicate with numerous apps which allow us to send messages to each other immediately and in many different formats. 
For example, mentioning someone's name on a social media post or doing a video call. We are better able to communicate new ideas which helps us to spread them more quickly. We no longer only have access to the thoughts of the wealthiest, most powerful members of society. Anybody has the ability to get their message out there now. It has opened up a new world of opportunity when it comes to jobs due to the remote working that the internet has allowed for. There are now completely new job roles like internet technology specialists and anyone can open their own online business which is an amazing new advantage. It has increased commercial competition so much that consumers now have so many more options to choose from which is a positive as it means that we are no longer dictated to by the biggest companies and the prices they decide to charge. The digital era is also bringing a digital currency which makes financial exchanges faster and easier, making it advantages for international trade. Cryptocurrency may become our only form of currency soon. Disadvantages The benefits of digitization have a flip side. The centralization of control over our wealth and personal information puts all of our eggs in one basket. Since technology is not immune to failure, so by relying on something that is not 100% reliable, we are running the risk of losing control of our assets. Handing control over also opens us up to digital crime like hackers who have unknown destructive potential. The ease of communication can have a negative impact on our real life social skills and weakens the strength of the community. Easy access to information increases the chance of its misuse, for example, incorrect self-diagnosis for health conditions and allows the spread of false information which can be used for manipulative purposes. Finally, the fast-paced shallow nature of digital exchanges could create a more passive society that is unable to consider ideas on a deeper level or with any passion. So overall, is it really beneficial to us? Now to summarize what we learned today, digital experience and cyberspace. What is cyberspace? Characteristics of cyberspace. Digital experience online in cyberspace, good and bad online and applications, how building apps leads to better customer experiences, how mobile apps have changed consumer behavior, the benefits of having a mobile app, advantages and disadvantages of digitization. As Bill Gates said, the internet is becoming the town square for the global village of tomorrow. In closing, I would repeat this and reiterate it once again. Cyberspace is an evolving entity that's increasingly overlapping with our daily lives. It has changed our working lives, our relationships, our schooling and even how we conduct and think about ourselves. With the influx of new devices and the prevalence of the internet, it seems that the line between digital and physical will continue to blur. Bringing both good and bad cyberspace and our relationship to it will continue to evolve. Today, it seems that most of us existing in our relationship to the digital environment that surrounds us and it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. I hope you enjoyed learning as much as I enjoyed teaching. So till we meet again, goodbye and take care. Thank you.